Uh, we tossed a coin, and I have to go first. First of the first. Um, this is a collaboration uh, in principle. Uh, in practice, it's two separate poems about the fact that where there's lots of people who don't collaborate very well. Uh, so the friendship between us is the collaboration, and the poems are separate records of that sort of meta-collaboration. I'm not going to say too much more about it, partly because the poem itself is quite long, and partly because I said I was going to do this introduction in the style of Donald Trump, and I've only just remembered I said I was going to do that. So uh, all I'll say now is that the poems are going to be great. You're, you're not going to believe how great. They're going to be great, beautiful, huge, impenetrable poems, and the Mexicans are going to pay for them. <laughs> or the Swedish. It doesn't matter. I don't care who pays. <laughs> Actually, funny enough, I was going to, one alternative title for this, I was going to call it Madame President. Um, but I thought I'd end up feeling too much like Marilyn Monroe. And there are some things I like to keep from my private life. The actual title is The Dawn at the End of the Evening. So here goes. The Dawn at the End of the Evening. In this portrait of Catherine Maris, it is a pile of words at first that you see gazing at you like a poem packed with jerky blackbirds. So in this portrait of Catherine Maris as the city of New York itself, the skyscrapers talk like books on a spreading shelf and crazily clear black air runs down them like wealth. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as a sense of humor, the laugh is like a smudge or like a dark duck landing on rough water. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as a broken gadget, you smash it, as if destruction and 21st century urban life were perfect matches. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as her own double, the trouble, but also the salvation, is that even in just being one person, there is normally a wobble. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as a rhyme, the rhyme is with the word embarrass, but the next it is with the word embrace. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as Kenneth Cope's student, the point was not what the poem meant, but how it lit or shaded or twisted the firmament. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as street life, the fact that the city is also a knife is something at which you do sometimes wonder if you connive. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as a liberal, you may still think it is the least worst form of politics overall. In this portrait of her as a circus knife thrower, women have at last been empowered to throw knives at their own shapes, which stand over there like spread eagle flowers. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as an unlikely jogger, thoughts dog her. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as a character in a film by Jacques Rivette, his characters rivet to you by knowing less than you would have thought possible about what they are going to get. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as a sidewalk, it turns into a pavement right beneath you as you stalk, along it idly wondering what language your newest neighbor talks. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as a walk in the countryside, she decides, by a fairly small margin, that it is more fun than suicide. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as a migrant, the documents must learn to slant. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as a not-woman, the phrase comes more or less out of nowhere, with her initial letter looming at the beginning to distinguish it from not being a woman. In this portrait of her as a vegan cannibal, you make a model of yourself out of tofu and nuts, and you nibble it right down to the kernel. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as a George Bazalet's painting, you can hang upside down for years without fainting, because disorientation is extremely invigorating. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as Jacqueline Onassis, or rather as Jackie Kennedy, Warhol would be there to welcome me when I die. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as a novel, you have to want to be an anvil, in this portrait of her wanting to put on a shirt, it is a fairly ordinary shirt, but it floats so far above you in the grey room that to reach it you must be wiry and alert. In this portrait of her as a minor medieval saint, cracked gold paint is crossed with thin angles that make the world seem at once fierce and quaint. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as money, Reagan and Thatcher made poems trickle down like honey. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as a poor sleeper, consciousness wants to keep her. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as a creative writing teacher, reach her. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as an ocean, 
It slips out of glasses of mediocre white wine and skin lotions. In this portrait of her as a dolphin, the days are rough seas on what she must sail on frail crafts made of endorphins. In this portrait of her as a cubist violin, of course you do not hear the swaggering and pleading din in the bar, but you watch the nerves of the lines as they swing. In this portrait of her as a modernist staircase, you can chase up many floors but still find yourself in the same old glassy place. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as a solid glass cylinder, the size of a woman, inside her, you see a slight drawl and a cautious walk and skin as open as cinders. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as an era of political change, the world skids by like an error, and you are also an old glove and a preposterously expensive latte and a gig economy driver. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as an android, she really enjoyed fooling several clever followers of Jung and Freud. In this portrait of her as a triangle, tears wrangle and jingle. In this portrait of her as a streetlight, scrawny white fragments of fluff pressed down gently onto a canal's vision of night. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as a social media addict, the poems get better and better as they get needier and seedier. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as Minnie Mouse reading Paul Salan, the big smile is a bit wan, but she will still write a meaner poem about it than they can. In this portrait of her as the transatlantic political future, the world may need a suture, but chaos does sort of suit her. In this portrait of her as a hypochondriac, a sort of an endless imaginative whack comes from dwelling on how flesh weakens or curdles or grows slack. In this portrait of Catherine Maris, as a large house, it shrinks and runs off and becomes intricate like a mouse. In this portrait of Catherine Maris as the man in the basement from her fabulous poem about the woman in the attic and the man in the basement, you must be as many people as you can. Describe it. We pass in the doorway onto easy gray air. A window is standing on a ledge above piles of sharply shimmering words. Break it. Remember to break it backwards too afterwards. Do not forget to wear a necklace. A black hair hangs by a perfectly ready thread. You should mention we haven't seen these poems that we wrote for each other. So Patrick has the same initials as my brother, plus I thought there was a similarity early on aesthetically between our poetry, so uh, we decided early that we were brother and sister. Um, so hence the title of this poem, Brother Sister. What I did to make this poem was I turned what turned out to be 80 pages of, of text between us over several years, which I cut and pasted into Word and distilled them into a, um, a poem that I felt was a, like an honest and true nugget of our friendship over the past several years. It's called Brother Sister for Patrick. Sister, I shout out to you from shiny field of Gloucestershire. I wish you lived nearer, brother. I'll try to visit soonest. Will facial interface ensue? One of these eons, sis. Brother, I have spent the autumn trying to get my head together. Quick greeting, sister, from murky, sulky Gloucestershire. Here in Aldborough, I want someone to be irreverent with. From Gloucestershire, gaudy and slippery. From Grayley toward Gloucestershire, more greetings. Aldborough nearly killed me. I'm going to New York to spend time with an ill friend. Wandering twin, glad you are alive after dying. Greetings for now from heavy, pale Gloucestershire. Happy New Year, sister. I happened on your book in Oxford Oxfam. Shall we fantasize ineffectually about meeting? Warmest, twinly love to you from gouty post-wind, but still slightly winded Gloucestershire. I'll be in Oxford on Wednesday. I can't be in Oxford on Wednesday. I'm chaperoning a school trip. I'm postponing Oxford. The Elliots are tonight. The snarkiest bell at the ball, my sister. I hear there will be a slaughter of some minor hedge fund managers by someone dressed as Ajax. Are you better with letters? I haven't received a letter since 1931. 
Sister, thank you for your life-giving letter. Quick, quick reading from Friskily, Cold Gloucestershire. Quick reading from Grandly, Cold Gloucestershire. After my rainy few days, him in gaudy, gleaming Gloucestershire, furring away at things, head full of Mozart and beta civilization, heaving wood around and watching cats skidding on snow. Bro, I wave from the Pyrenees where I'm taking the children to ski. I go straight to NYC. It's hideously cold here, minus 13. I have no sense of direction. I'm fundamentally too neurotic. More later, when the kids are not killing each other. I have bronchitis. It was a migraine ravage day. There was thermonuclear levels of pharmaceuticals. Qatar and Idol. Euphoria and dysphoria. I'm suffering. I'm you. Sorry you're me, but at least I'm smarter when I'm you. A migraine cascade. A faintly migrainey day. Bronchitis, bronchitis, pneumonia, or such like. Peculiarly, under the weather, woozy Gloucestershire. In A&E with injury, blood from my kidney, face like a wallet porcupine. I suspect I have a mild case of pericarditis. GP says it's not pericarditis. We're driving through Wales. Receptionist Patchy, paging Dr. Freud in his recursive loops. I send missing love to you too. Love from Juan yet sultry, friskily sun and windy, jolly uncle distractedly wind sunny but promising blackberries soon Gloucestershire, and more love now from icy mud, world squelching, goofily sweet, euphoric, dysphoric and migrainy Gloucestershire.